Welcome back, I'm Matt Chemist, and today we have important papers in organic synthesis featuring specialized reagents for carbon nitrogen chemistry. To give you an overview about what we're going to be discussing today, first we'll talk about Tosmic, then we'll be talking about Eschenmoser salt, thirdly we'll be discussing Breterick's reagent, and finally we'll talk about N-hydroxymethylthalamid, or thalamide, if you prefer. Tosmic is the shorthand name for a reagent known as toluene sulfonyl methyl isocyanide. Some notable applications of this include for converting ketones into the corresponding nitriles via a reaction known as the Van Leusen reductive cyanation. There are additional types of Van Leusen reactions, such as for the synthesis of oxazoles, imidazoles, paroles, and even some others that I won't be discussing in this video. The synthesis of Tosmic is quite straightforward, as you start with sodium toluene sulfinate, this is then reacted with paraformaldehyde formamide in the presence of formic acid, giving you this formamide product. The formamide is then dehydrated using POCl3, affording you with this isocyanide. Isocyanides can be drawn in two different resonance structures, where there's a positive charge on the nitrogen and a negative charge on the carbon, or alternatively, the carbon can be drawn with a carbene. As I mentioned before, the synthesis of Tosmic is quite straightforward, and if you're looking for a quick reference where it can be prepared, I've included that down here for your convenience. Earlier I mentioned that Tosmic could be used for reductive cyanation through a 2 plus 3 cycloaddition reaction, forming this dihydrooxazole shown here. This dihydrooxazole is then eliminated using potassium terpetoxide or another base, affording the corresponding nitrile. Here's a few examples of this, such as this steroid derivative which was converted to a mixture of diastereomers at the 17 position. A few other examples are shown here where this ketal was converted, this adamantane derivative was converted, and this naphthalene derivative was also converted to the corresponding nitrile. Now most of the time you'll see this done with ketones but there are some exceptions where aldehydes have been used as well. Normally aldehydes will convert to the corresponding oxazole through elimination of this tosyl group as I'll be discussing later. The mechanism of this reaction is as follows. Initially, the potassium terputoxide deprotonates one of the alpha protons of the tosmic. This resonance-stabilized anion is then able to attack a carbonyl, such as a ketone. This results in the formation of an alkoxide, which is able to attack at the carbon of the isocyanide, also called an isonitrile. This generates a carbon-centered anion, which is then able to undergo tautomerization with the H-alpha to the tosyl group. This then results in the ring opening of the dihydrooxazole, forming a formamide. Finally, this formamide enamine group is able to eliminate off the toluene sulfinyl group. And finally, this formamide is attacked by an alkoxide. Here, ethoxide is shown, but earlier we used potassium terpetoxide, so maybe this would be terpetoxide instead, resulting in the elimination of a formate ester as well as your nitrile, which just gets protonated upon workup. Now, if an aldehyde is used, typically what you'll observe is the formation of an oxazole. The way that this works is similar to the previous mechanism. However, instead of having the ring opening of this dihydrooxazole, the base is able to eliminate that tosyl group on its own, affording an oxazole instead. It's also possible to apply this to imines in order to get substituted imidazoles. Here's an example where an N-phenylimidazole was synthesized. The mechanism for this is quite similar, except instead of a carbonyl, we have an imine. If you instead want to make a parole, all you have to do is react this with an electron-deficient alkene, also known as a Michael acceptor. The anion is able to add in a 1,4 addition fashion, resulting in the formation of an enolate. The alpha position of this enolate is then able to attack at the carbon, resulting in the formation of a dihydroparole. Through a similar elimination and tautomerization of the resulting parole, this toluene sulfinyl group is eliminated, and then through tautomerization, we're afforded with a parole. This doesn't just work for alkenes, however, it also works for alkynes, as was used in the case of this cyclopropane-containing parole. However, since this is already able to form a parole, it didn't need to eliminate off the toluene sulfonyl group. So in this case, it's possible to retain the toluene sulfinyl group. If you instead use a diazonium with your tosmic, you'll be afforded with a 1,2,4 triazole. So this methodology can be applied to a wide range of different functional groups, even beyond what I'm discussing here. If you're curious to check out some of the other chemistry that you can do with this, 
I'd encourage you to check out this reference, which is from EROS, the Electronic Encyclopedia of Reagents for Organic Synthesis, which highlights some useful transformations that you can do with it. The next reagent we'll be discussing is Eschenmoser salt. This is essentially an interrupted manic reaction intermediate, which is easily prepared from the reaction of trimethylamine with diiodomethane. The resulting quaternary ammonium salt is then heated in sulfalane, driving off iodomethane and forming the desired Eschenmoser salt. Sometimes you'll see other counter ions used besides the iodide, but this is one of the commercially available forms of Eschenmoser salt. One example of something you can do is reacting this with a TMS enol ether. This enables dimethylaminomethylation in the alpha position, which by using a TMS enol ether over a regular ketone, it's possible to select which position will react with the amenium. If you were to just react the corresponding ketone in the presence of an acid with Eschenmoser salt, you'll end up getting enolation in both positions and you'll obtain a mixture of products. But by preparing the desired TMS enol ether geometry, you'll get reactivity at the desired position. Here's an example where a lactone was deprotonated in the alpha position and the corresponding enolate was reacted with Eschenmoser salt. They then methylate this to form the quaternary ammonium salt and upon treatment with the strong base DBU, this is eliminated forming an exocyclic alkene, which in this case is also an acrylate. This has been applied to other examples such as this acrylamide shown here. Another cool thing that's been demonstrated with Eschenmoser salt is that if you first acylate a pyridine, for instance with ethyl chloroformate, it's possible to increase the acidity of that heterobenzylic position, also known as a pyridylic position, which then creates a good nucleophile which is able to attack Eschenmoser salt. This then also undergoes elimination to afford the corresponding alkene. If you want to check out the paper where they demonstrate that, I'll include a link to this down below. Now, it's also possible to use Eschenmoser salt for electrophilic aromatic substitution chemistry. In this case, a derivative of indole was selectively reacted at the three position of this sem-protected indole, rather than this bulkier position, where this gramine intermediate was prepared. This was then pushed forward as an intermediate for a possible candidate, JAK inhibitor. The next reagent that we'll be discussing is Brederick's reagent, which is a useful reagent for aminomethenylation. You might want to form an aminomethenyl group when you're synthesizing heterocycles, for instance. And the synthesis of Brederick's reagent is quite straightforward. First, you react dimethylformamide with dimethylcarbamoyl chloride. This results in the formation of a formamidinium salt, which can then be reacted with alkoxides, such as sodium terputoxide, to prepare Brederick's reagent or other orthoformate derivatives. I couldn't find a good procedure for this when going from the chloride directly to Brederick's reagent. However, in the EROS article, they mentioned that this can be done in ether, but it requires 24 hours, whereas it only takes one to two hours when the corresponding methyl sulfate anion is present and cyclohexane is used as the solvent. As I mentioned before, you can do aminomethenylation of the alpha position of ketones. Broadly speaking, this can be applied to a lot of carbonyl containing compounds and compounds with an electron withdrawing group broadly speaking. This also includes ilids, such as this triphenylphosphonium ilid. Here's an example where an aminomethenyl group was used to synthesize a uracil derivative. However, depending on which version they used, whether they used urea, thiourea, or guanidine, they were able to prepare the corresponding oxygen, sulfur, or nitrogen derivative. Here's another example where some nucleoside analogs were prepared through treatment with different reagents. In this case, hydrazine was used to prepare the corresponding pyrazole. However, when an amidine was used, they were instead afforded with substituted pyrimidines. I thought that this was pretty cool. I also don't know why they'd use sodium methoxide and ethanol. That's kind of a weird combination, but if you have any rationale for that, I'd love to hear it down below. Maybe it's just what they had in the lab at the time. Also, they're doing this in ethanol at 130 degrees Celsius. That should ring some alarm bells, as that probably means they were doing this in a sealed tube. You can also substitute some of the different groups on this Brederick's reagent. For instance, you can react this with an alcohol to get this acetal derivative. It's also possible to substitute the alkoxy group with another amine so that you get a dihydroguanidine group. It's then also possible to substitute the dimethylamino groups upon treatment with further equivalents of a secondary amine. 
Bredericks reagent also engages in electrophilic aromatic substitution chemistry, although it requires a pretty activated arene to get it to go, and phenols are extremely activated arenes. One last example that I wanted to show is the treatment of this cyclohexanone derivative with Bredericks reagent, which then aminomethenolates both positions of the ketone, and upon treatment with Lawson's reagent, or P2S5, they're afforded with this sulfur abomination, which it looks like it does not want to exist. It's kind of pretty though. The last reagent for today is N-hydroxymethylthalamide, or thalamid if you prefer. This is a useful imenium precursor, as it's electrophilic enough to do electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, and it even works on electron deficient arenes. This type of chemistry, more broadly speaking, is called the cherniak ihorn reaction. In addition, this reagent is able to react with enolates, adding a thalamidomethyl group to the alpha position of enolates. The synthesis of this reagent is really straightforward. You take thalamide and it reacts with formaldehyde. Couldn't be simpler than that. Typically, to get the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactivity that you want, you have to use a strong acid like triflic acid or sulfuric acid. However, it reacts in a fashion like you'd expect and its reactivity is dictated by the strength of the directing groups. It'll even directly react with benzoic acid in the meta position in the presence of sulfuric acid. Here's an example where a nitro group, a bromide, and a methyl group were present, and the directing effect of the nitro group was stronger than the directing effect of the methyl group. This really showcases how good of an electrophile this is once the corresponding imenium is formed. Additionally, this will react with various nucleophiles such as this ethyl acetoacetate, or this benzene-containing derivative. This looks like it's pretty recent chemistry, right? Well, some analogs were explored quite some time ago, so it's surprising that this doesn't show up more often in synthesis, especially when this is such a convenient group to remove. To remove a thalamide group, most commonly this can just be treated with hydrazine. This will form a six-membered ring and liberate the free amine. So with that, I hope that this has been useful for teaching you some new types of chemistry you can do using carbon nitrogen based reagents. Do you have bigger synthetic problems? Would you benefit from having the eyes of a skilled synthetic chemist look at some of the problems that you're encountering? Maybe you're working with a synthesis on demand company or a CRO who's running into some roadblocks, or maybe you're trying to set up your own synthesis in house. I'm currently accepting a few more clients for the 2025 year. If you're interested in getting in contact with me, my email is listed down below. Alternatively, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.